We're going to start this puppy up. Clear? Prop? And welcome back to Tip of the Week. How many of you are familiar with the popular RV12 kit from Vance? That's their low-wing LSA compliant aircraft kit that is flown and built by hundreds and hundreds of people. Well, this week you get to see what it's like to put one of them together. We're going to show you in fast speed how the wing goes together and you can then compare this to other kits and feel comfortable about whether you would enjoy or appreciate the type of construction necessary to put the entire kit together. And you decide whether this is something that trips your trigger. The wing came in two boxes. The first crate was full of all of the ribs and other components that you see laid out here on the table. But underneath all of these components were the wing skins. The other crate was a long box and of course inside of that were the spars. The spars are basically built as far as the solid riveting goes, but we're going to add the brackets and braces and other components mostly using pop riveting techniques and just by following the steps in the manual. In fact you'll notice the page number and step number in the lower right hand corner of the video screen and that ties to the building manual that comes with the aircraft. What you see next is how we make the tie downs, the wing tie downs. Basically we're going to enlarge a hole and then we're going to tap the hole so that we can screw an eye bolt into the bottom and have a very nice tie down on both wings. Lots of L angles that act as stiffeners. And of course we have a left and right wing so there's a lot of things we can do in unison. Just the mirror opposite of each other as we build. Nothing very difficult. All of the parts fit. They're pre-bent, pre-drilled. And everything has a part number. and most things are popped riveted, not all things. Now here are the wing attachment brackets and these will get riveted on with solid rivets but all of the solid riveting is done with a squeezer so you do not need a pneumatic gun. There is some countersinking that is required and that is relatively easy to do with a little practice and that is for the flush rivets we use so that they blend in smooth with the top surface. And that tool just ensures that the countersinking is done precisely the same each time we repeat it for the all of the holes. And notice the solid rivets, those were squeezed on with a hand squeezer. Now notice these brackets, these are flap around brackets. Two pieces and we're going to sandwich in a bearing that the flap round will pivot on. 
and this is a very elegant design with a genuine roller bearing that will fit in between the two pieces which get riveted together capturing that bearing and then a bolt can go through that bearing hole and have a very nice smooth rotation using that bearing. Lots of very nice engineering and quality in these kits. And there it is all riveted together again with a squeezing rivet tool. Notice how a lot of the pieces need to be separated simply using a bandsaw. And this is the front spar of the wing and that will be the attach bracket to the fuselage and there is the tip and all the holes are drilled they match up beautifully so we're just clicoing and then riveting these were pop riveted in place the wing ribs need a little bit of adjustment to keep them flat because once they're bent into shape they do have a t bit of a warp to them but we bring that back into perfect flatness using a fluting pliers and that simply puts a little squeeze in the edge there and that basically shrinks the length of the metal which will pull the metal together and we just keep adding these flutes until the wing rib sits flat and here we're talking about deburring the edges of those lightning holes get all the sharp edges off and we're going to add brackets on some and remove some of the angles on others depending where the rib is situated along the spar and of course we can't play the audio because we're running the video at high speed but that's okay we will certainly understand how this wing goes together in one quick sitting rather than watching it at regular speed which would take several hours And of course we have a left and a right wing so a lot of the ribs are mere images of each other the build manual is absolutely wonderful you do not need a video to build the plane obviously it speeds things up if you can watch the video first and see what things look like before you go and read the manual and build so the manual is very complete the video is just a huge time saver by cutting many many hours off of the reading and understanding what the written word says and positioning things moment we'll have all of our ribs attached to the spars and these will be pop riveted for the most part which makes construction fast and easy and all of those holes are pre-drilled so they match up very nicely And notice we're only using a couple of saw horses to do all of this building for both spars at the same time. No need for a table. So you can't say that you don't have 
the right table to put together a kit like this. And here's the front spar at the nose of these ribs. And remember what makes this aircraft somewhat special is that these wings are removable. Very easily removable. That was part of the design. And that's one reason there are no gas tanks inside these wings. So you don't have to worry about that if you're going to be pulling these wings off. A lot of uh, very nice, unique features in the RV-12. One of the most popular low-wing kit airplanes out there. And again, it's light sport compliant. You see that brass hole there to the left on the screen. That's where one of the pins is going to be located in the aircraft fuselage a pin that we will pull in order to remove the wing and then of course when we reinstall the wings we put a pin through that hole now our wing is taking shape with the ribs and the front spar and we have grommets because we're going to be sending wires through the wing because we have a very nice set of uh, position lights at the end. There's also a stall warning device that is built into the wing and basically it sets off a small electric switch which we can use then to notify us by way of a light or other indicator as we desire and we're simply putting the pieces together and the switch will be operated by air hitting a tab and this is all designed in at the right angle so that that actually works very nicely And we'll even make an electrician out of you yet. But Vans is very good. They tell you exactly what to do as far as installing these small components, even in the case of the wiring. And there's those grommets, which we're going to pass the wires through, and the location for the stall warning device. It's attached right to the rib nose and notice that tab which will hit the air and we're showing the skin now that will come up and the stall warning tab will will protrude through that and you notice this is designed so that those skins are not very large they simply overlap and we have several of them. We'll see that coming up shortly. Certainly no guesswork even for the wiring on this kit. Every single wire is depicted as far as exactly where it is to go and what it is to attach to. So you really don't know, you don't need to know anything about designing an electrical circuit because everything is laid out in the manual very specifically every detail also keep in mind that when you have a removable wing like this 
and that wing has some electrical connections, for example, for the light, for the stall warning sensor, we need a method to connect and disconnect the wires when the wing is removed and attached. And that's what some of that wiring was all about. And that will come up again as we watch. And that device there is going to mate with the side of the fuselage to make the electrical connections for the lights and the stall warning sensor. Now here we're applying our nose skin and again here are these small sections of skin which makes it very easy to work with. One person can install these skins. And Here's an example of our hand riveter, the squeezer. The rivets at the very nose or leading edge of the wing are flush rivets for good aerodynamic properties and then as we go to the rear they are the pop rivets much quicker and easier to install. You just follow the directions and everything will come together nicely. All of these skins are pre-drilled the holes match up with the ribs and with the spar an incredible time saver, just a matter of getting the right part in the right position. The RV-12 is not available as a scratch-built aircraft and you can see why so many parts are manufactured to precise tolerances and really doesn't lend itself to the scratch builder as do some other aircraft. Notice how easy it was to flip the wing over when you're using a pair of sawhorses so we can work on the underside or the top side as necessary. And of course, this is how the entire wing skin set was able to pack into that small crate because none of the wing skins are very big. They are small pieces that overlap. No particular procedure is difficult or complicated, it's just lots and lots of small procedures. You can see all of the wing skins initially come with the plastic protective sheathing on it and you can pull that off at any time you want. Some carpet strips over the sawhorses will protect that nice finish when you start flipping the wing over onto the skins. At the very root of the wing we have additional skin to make it extra thick because this is where a person will step to get into the aircraft. So all of the thought of strength and thicknesses have been figured out. Here's a tool to provide a slight angle at the edge so that that edge blends in very nicely with the part that it touches. The RV-12 is certainly different than many of its other brother aircrafts, RV-7, RV, all the other, well in fact all of the other RVs, in that you are not required to get a pneumatic riveter 
and bucking bar to put it together. It's either pop rivets or solid rivets that only require a hand squeezer. So this is a unique aircraft among the Vans product line because it is much easier and faster to put together but certainly all of the quality and the engineering thought that went into all of the components is still there like all of the other RV aircraft. Notice that square opening. That is where your hand goes when you remove the wing. You grab it. That is a handle. So that was built into the wing, that rectangular opening. And we're simply putting on a edge trim piece. We're at the very outside edge of the wing. just about all riveted here. Here's an access panel. And here's the very tip. And again that rectangular hole is for your hand for grabbing. The wing is upside down right now. Here's a little tool, a piece of wood with a slot in it that helps us adjust and bend the tabs on this component so we get it to the angle we want as specified in the plans so that it matches up very nicely. And this is because of course the complex angles at the very end of the wing where everything comes together. Now if you order the optional strobe light at the tip, then you're going to have to cut a hole into the end of your wing. Of course, Vans supplies the template, and we're just showing how to make the hole. We're drilling a series of holes, and then we'll use our snips to cut it out. I think most builders go with the lighting and here's a fiberglass piece that will trim out the outside part of this light. So with all the metal in this aircraft we have a little bit of fiberglass here. There's the strobe itself mounted inside. And this is one reason we need to pass wires through the wing to power this unit up on both wings. Later we'll see that another reason for power into the wing is for the landing light, optional landing light. Now this section deals with building the flaperons and attaching them to the wing. So we have a couple of brackets we need to create and all the dimensions are given and we're just going to use our band saw to create them. fabricating our mounting brackets. And all of this fabrication is done simply with a simple 
table bandsaw. Now the flap runs are very uniquely created. We can watch and understand by looking at these pictures. And part of the reason for that tube is that these are balanced and so that is the proper weight that is being added to the flapper on itself. Here we see the flap rod coming all together, and those are the skins, and that's what it looks like when it's basically completed. There's a nose piece to it, and after that nose piece is on, it'll be ready to attach to the wing. But if you like an aircraft kit where you are told explicitly what to do and how to do it, Vans is the one for you. Because if you do it, you'll get an airplane out of it, guaranteed. Now, some people like to have a little leeway and to figure things out for themselves. And that would be a different kit. Now, what we're looking at here is creating the opening for the optional landing light. Again, we're going to be asked to create a hole in our wing for the landing light. And Vans provides a template so that we can mark exactly where we need to drill. And as you see here, we're ready to create the opening. And one way to do it 
as I show that you simply drill some large holes and then cut out all of the pieces. Next, we're going to have a piece of Lexan on the front for our lens. And Vance provides the metal support for making that happen properly. Of course, that'll go on the inside so that it looks very nice. And complete with nut plates because this needs to be removable so that we can maintain the light if necessary. And then the light itself will be mounted on the inside. And of course we need some brackets first to actually hold the light assembly. None of this is without cost so certainly Notice that a van's kit demands resources to be able to provide all of these fine components. And there you have it, a sample of what it takes to build an RV-12 kit. So enough of this watching, get up and get back to building.